I don't know what, you know, the average person remembers about, uh, you know, their siblings growing up, but I have very, very vivid memories sitting in my sister's room playing the Genesis. I remember having very vivid memories sitting in my sister's room playing the Genesis and her screaming. And it's not like... It was pretty much an everyday occurrence, but the thing is, like, when my sister screams, it's not like like an, the average person's scream. Like I've mentioned before, she speaks normally higher than the, the average person, like decibel-wise. The decibel level is much higher than the average person. But my memories are of my sister screaming so loudly that the table shook, the bed shook, the bureau shook, the windows shook. I always expected that during my childhood, I would be up there one day and she would yell so loud and just hit that perfect note to shatter the windows. I thought that was definitely going to be a story I'd be able to tell. And unfortunately, that has not happened yet. When someone meets my family, they inevitably ask, how are you, you? Why is that, you ask? <laughs> have I got a story for you? So one thing you have to really understand about my sister screaming is that Usually when she's screaming, it's not something a normal person would be screaming about. It's not like before when I said, oh, if I get stung by a bee, I'm probably going to be like, ah, fuck. No, no, no. She screams about the weirdest stuff that normal people shouldn't be screaming about. So let's rewind. A couple years ago, when the favorite child was still here, she decided we had garage sales all the time. And we couldn't have them at the favorite child's house. So the favorite child had to bring, well, we had to get all the favorite child's shit and bring it to one of our houses to have the garage sale. So this one year... We're outside, we have everything ready, whatever, and it starts raining. And it's like really, really hard rain. And we have a radio on outside. I don't know why I did the phone for a radio, but whatever. So we have a radio on outside, and the radio's like, there's a hurricane warning for your area. And we're like, oh shit, what are we gonna do? We have all this shit outside. So we start like furiously trying to get it back. We're tying things down and whatever. And we had like a, a, a tent, like not like a camping tent, we had like one of those tents that they have at like outdoor events, like carnivals and stuff, where you put like everything under it and whatever. And so the wind is blowing like, like I'm talking like gale force winds. Like this is a hurricane warning. That's, that's what it is, which is weird because we're in New York, but whatever. Or maybe it was a tornado warning. Tornado warnings are a lot more common. I don't remember. But I remember it was pouring as well. And the wind is blowing really, really hard. And the tent starts to fly away. Now, a normal person would be like, that's a lot of money I'm losing, but I'm going to get the fuck inside before I fly away. Not my sister. One of the tent poles comes loose from the ground. So the tent is like flying. It was like a, a pretty wide one. Like it's wider than my bedroom, the, the area it covers. So one tent pole is flying away. The others are, are bolted down securely, but one tent pole is flying away. And instead of, you know, being like a normal human, like, oh shit, why don't we, you know, tie down the other tent poles, like make sure that they don't move or fuck it. That tent's going away. No, no, no. My sister's first reaction is to take a running start. I'm talking like top speed. Now, when I say it was blowing away, I mean this tent pole that's supposed to be dug into the ground was flying. Like it was way off the ground. And my sister's reaction is to run at it full speed, full speed. She's booking it. She's running at it. She leaps up, grabs the bottom of the pole, and hangs off of it. And it's not like, oh, she's going to pull it down. No, she's in the air. She's flying away with this tent pole. And she's furiously trying to bring it down, and she's screaming. And it's not like she's screaming like, oh, shit. Oh, shit, I'm flying. What the fuck, weather? No, no, no. What she screams, this is, this is legitimately what my sister screams as she's about to fly away. Satan! Leave this place! And she has these two, like, wonderful, amazing old friends. And by old friends, I mean they're like 90 years old. And they're, like, holding on to things so they don't, like, get knocked over or whatever. And they turn to me, and they both have, like, perfect... Like, she's known them for years. They both have, like, you know very quizzical faces on and they turn to me really calmly and they're like does she does, does she get like this often and i'm like what how have you what 
They're like, we've never seen her like this. What? What? That's that's like her default setting. Crazy as a motherfucker. Like that's her default setting. I don't understand how anyone has ever, how anyone who's ever been in her presence has not noticed this. And in case any of you guys were wondering, it's not like that's the only time she screams about Satan. Uh, Satan now lives in her cell phone. Um, in case you were wondering, she has a friend that constantly texts her all the time because she doesn't have a real job anymore. And she's like, can, can you come hang out? And instead of being like, no, fuck you, stop calling me. It's, Satan, why are you tormenting me? So, so, so th there's that about my sister. Like, that's one thing you should know. She screams a lot. Yeah. So the other very important fact about my sister is that she has a dog. And now, you, you, I mean, from the data that I've given you so far, you can probably extrapolate that you should feel bad for this dog, that that's her owner. But, uh. It's even weirder because the dog, the dog is a rescue dog, which is, is great. I'm all for that. I love people who, I, I, I love, you know, people reaching out to dogs that have been abused or whatever. And, you know, they, they, they need a loving home. Except that probably this dog, especially in particular, should not have gone to my sister. Because the dog was already crazy. Now she has a crazy owner. And that just makes everything worse. Everything. The first thing that's weird about this dog is that, I mean, I, I can understand. Like, you know when you have, like, a, a puppy and they get scared that you're not coming home? Like, when you leave to go out to get groceries or whatever, they act like it's the end of the world? This puppy, when we first got her, she's not really a puppy, but you know what I mean. All dogs are puppies to me. When we first got her, she thought that every time you went to the bathroom, you were Mario, that you were going to jump through the pipes in the toilet and disappear. Like, she would come... She, like if I had to go, if I had to poop, I had to take a shit. I would go to the bathroom and close the door. And like, if I closed the door and, you know, turned the handle or locked it, that, that bathrooms are going to be another story. Oh, uh, my family doesn't understand what the purpose of a bathroom is, but whatever, that's for another day. Uh, the dog would cry louder and louder until you came out of the bathroom. I don't know if you've ever like been in this situation, but it's really hard to go potty when something is outside the door crying for your presence. So I either have to, you know, shit as quick as quickly as human as quick as humanly possible. So I have to get in there and be like, yeah, and then run away. Or I have to open the door or leave it unlatched so that she could, you know, bump it open and like sit there. She watches you while you shit. That is the weirdest experience ever. I don't know if you've ever been in that situation, but someone watching you, like making eye contact with you while you're taking a shit. It's like that that whole you know thing in the door the the slot in the door and the blah, 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 that slot in the bathroom stall that you can make eye contact out of yeah it's really weird when someone's in the actual stall with you making eye contact with you that makes it even worse the dog is also deathly afraid of plastic bags I'm we're guessing you know someone probably tormented her as a puppy with plastic bags or something but like crinkle 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 she hears that she's fucking booking it she's out of there. So, with a mom like my sister, that poor dog will never get any better. So I'm going to tell you a story. This is the story. This is the story about my sister. So let's rewind. About, oh, I'm going to say six to eight months ago, give or take, before all this white shit out there was there. I'm pointing to the window, but you can't see it. Um, about six to eight months ago, give or take, uh, there was a fox in our neighborhood and it had mange. It was kind of sickly looking, but it wandered into the backyard and Joy, my sister's dog, you know, being a dog, wants to protect the family, that kind of stuff, uh, attacked it. Now this fox was probably already, like already mostly dead when it met Joy, but Joy for the most part finished it off. And this set my sister off. Like, I'm sure the normal person would have been like, oh shit, my dog killed something. Like, oh shit, we gotta take it to the vet and whatever. Oh my god, like, oh yeah, but no, no, no. My sister took this to a whole nother level. I don't know if you've ever seen a cartoon when somebody like runs in a circle around the building and you hear like, ah, 
I thought that that wasn't a thing that occurred in reality until that day. So my sister and my mom are freaking out. My sister's screaming. My mom goes next door because she doesn't want to deal with this right now. Because my sister's screaming. And my sister's looking for my mom. She doesn't know she's gone next door. So instead, my sister runs around the house in a circle, screaming, looking for mom. And I'm not talking about like, ma. No, 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 no. It's just blood curdling scream. There's no like word. There's no intent behind it. It's just screaming. So she's like, for at least five to 10 minutes. And I mean, we have a pretty sizable house. She should have been tired from that. Just running around, especially holding a note that long. Pretty impressive on her part, but it gets much worse. So my sister's like, my dog's a murderer and mother won't even console me. And the two of them, they're like digging a grave for the fox or whatever. They're like getting it up. My sister's like, there's blood everywhere. I did not see a drop of blood, but I mean, I saw a little bit of blood on, on Joy's face. So I mean, there's that, but it wasn't like, my sister was describing that there was just like gallons and gallons of blood, like we were playing a video game. And I just, I feel like that's not the normal human reaction to things like this. I'm just going to put that out there. Fast forward, my mom comes back. Uh, uh, you know, they get the fox in a bag. They're going to take it to the vet, to make sure it didn't have any weird diseases. They're going to take George to the vet too. So my sister, she gets in the car, right? She's still flipping a shit. She's still yelling, but she's, she's she's got a lid on the yelling for she's had a lid on the yelling for about oh seven minutes, give or take. So what happens is some poor unfortunate jogger happens to be going past my house as she's trying to pull out with the dog and the dead fox in the car. Um and the guy he sees that she's backing up. And he stops because why would you want to get hit by a car? And so instead of being like a normal human and, you know, waiting or, you know, like sticking your head out the window and being like, you can go, it's fine. My sister instead rolls down the window, pokes her head out of it, looks this poor unfortunate jogger in the eye, makes sure that... Make, make sure you know in your head, this is what's happening. They lock eyes, right? He's probably thinking, oh, she's gonna be like, you can go. No, 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 they lock eyes. My sister opens her mouth. Words do not come out, only <gasps> She's screaming out the window of her car at this guy that she's just made eye contact with. He fucking books it. He runs down the street. This man is terrified. This woman is obviously possessed by Satan. She yells about him enough, probably is. And it's not like that's where it ends. She doesn't stop screaming. Even though the guy fucking booked it, there's no one there anymore. Her head is still out the window. She's still screaming. Ah! She pulls out, still screaming, drives down the road. There's like a hill uh, in that direction, uh, in the direction to her house. So she goes, you can still hear her. You could hear her all the way down the hill. Ah! It was probably the most cartoon experience of my life. I think that's the only way to describe it because normal people don't react like that. And that's pretty much how most people know my family's not normal. Hey there, guys and gals. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Now, you've been introduced to all the major players in my family, but why don't we put a little time aside to get to know me?